So what is going on everyone? Fernando Silva here with another video and as you guys know Spring Loaded was yesterday. We got all those new Apple devices, the AirTags, the iMacs and all that good stuff and within all that excitement and hoopla we kind of forgot that Apple did put out their RC edition for iOS and iPadOS as well as some other ones like macOS, tvOS and things like that. But I'm going to focus on iPadOS 14.5 RC edition which means that's the release candidate which means that you guys are probably going to get it very soon, most likely next week. So without further ado, let's see if there's anything new because this was a pretty big update, but let's get into it. So let's get right into this video, guys. So if I go into the images, I took a screenshot of how big the actual file was. So you're looking at about 4.65 gigabytes. That is huge compared to the beta 8 and the other betas we've been getting. Basically, as the betas went up, the size went down because less and less things were being changed. So now this is iPadOS 14.5 and all of the different betas kind of combined into one and that's why you're getting a 4.65 gig. So make sure you have at least 9 gigs of space to make sure you have enough room to install this guy on your iPad Pros or any iPads therefore. But then if we go into the settings, go into the about up here, we're going to see what build number we're on and you can see that if I bring this up, we are now on 14.5 and that's 18E199. So we got rid of any and all letters at the end of it, which means this is it. This is the release candidate. This is what's going to be pushed out to the public come probably next week on Tuesday. So that is what that means, which is perfect. And again, it took Apple eight betas to get this right. And I guess it was a lot of bug fixes. Some features were added because there was only two real things that I noticed that were different at all. And I had to take screenshots of them because they were splash screens. So if I move over to the right, in Apple Music, when you open up Apple Music, you get these, you get this new splash screen, which basically gives you three different things, right? It talks about lyric sharing, so connect with friends by sharing the lines that move you right while playing the song. Then you have city charts. Explore what's popular in over 100 cities from all over the world and then made for you, which is basically a playlist that's taking whatever you like and put into a playlist for you, just like you know Spotify has been doing for a very long time. And again, I'm not an Apple Music user, but I just noticed it's on the splash screen. And the next thing I wanted to show everybody was in the Find My. So if I go into the new Find My, you can see that under Items, it looks a little bit different now, right? So you can press add item, and then again, you get this new splash screen that lets you add air tags, right? Yesterday, this wasn't there. Yesterday it was just other supported item or just supported items. But now you have the option to add an air tag and then also other supported items. So if you want to press air tag, just kind of looks for it, sees if it's around. Obviously, I don't have any. And then if I go to other supported item, it just searches for it, which is cool. And then identify found item is a little bit different because this. Although on the iPad it won't work, but with the iPhone, this is going to give you a second paragraph that tells you, hey, if you find an AirTag that isn't yours, you can kind of just tap it with your phone and it gives you the information that you would need to return that to the rightful owner, which is awesome. Again, the iPad can't do that, but iPhones can. You'll see a second paragraph down here explaining that for the iPhones. But again, overall, those are the only two changes. So just get ready for all the good stuff like AirTags, all the different updates that we got. If you guys want, I can create a video that covers 14.5 holistically, so everything that you would need to know with 14.5, every update that came with every beta update, or I can just kind of make a playlist and show you guys every beta, but I can make a nice concise video showing you all the different updates of 14.5. But the last thing I do want to touch on is battery performance. So if we go into battery, check out the percentage. So we are now at 5 hours and 38 minutes of screen on time the last 24 hours, and then 3 hours and 42 minutes over the last 10 days. And again, you can see what's taking up most of my power, right? It's NBA 2K, it's LumaFusion, it's Notes, so you can see how much time I'm spending on it. So one of my heavy days on Monday, let's say, right? Six hours and 32 minutes of screen on time. And again, 150% battery usage because I was plugged in, and you can see an hour and 41 minutes of NBA 2K, 37%. Safari, 25% in an hour and a half. LumaFusion, 17% at 50 minutes. So the battery, I guess, maybe is getting a little bit better but I'm being a little bit more proactive with battery management to make sure that this thing lasts me because I still don't know if I'm gonna go with the 2021 iPad Pro quite yet. I need to see software implementation. I need to see software upgrades before I start kind of diving in. I'll definitely get it to test it out, but no guarantees I'm gonna keep it. But that is the battery power. So those are the big things that I'm looking for with the 2021 iPad. Just improved battery life. The hardware is gonna be awesome. And then also obviously software that goes with that hardware. But that's gonna do it for this view. Let's go to the normal view and uh, check out this nice little case. I still, you know, I rock this in the other video. This is by Moft, a nice little float. And then always the paper-like screen protector. First link in the description. 
So that is pretty much gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like you guys saw, there weren't too many updates. The only reason it was such a big file size is because it's a release candidate, so they're putting everything into one again. With, with each beta, the way they do it is they incrementally add new things, whether it's bug fixes, performance updates, things like that, and each update is smaller and smaller and smaller. We got to like 100 megabytes for the beta 8 update. So now the final one is the culmination of all those things, and that's why it's so big, because the release candidate is really just the final version of iPadOS 14.5 that's gonna be released to everybody in the public. So that's the reason why it's so big, but we still didn't see too many differences because it, again, it is an aggregate of all those new updates that we saw from beta one all the way to beta eight. But I digress, that is what's going on. So for the RC edition, we only saw some new splash screens, nothing too crazy. And again, just Apple tightening everything up, getting it ready for everybody to enjoy with 14.5 on their iPhones and their iPads. But that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think about the Apple event. Are you guys getting new iPad Pros? Are they worth it? I've already given my two cents on it. I basically just want all that awesome hardware that Apple's putting into the iPads. I want the software to match that hardware. For instance, right now with my iPad, my 2018 iPad with four gigs of RAM, it handles everything that I need it to handle and it handles it amazingly. So what is that extra power gonna get me personally? Probably not that much. Maybe some more efficiency, better export speeds, things like that but I want the software to match the hardware, right? I wanna be able to multitask for real. I don't wanna to have to kinda of do workarounds to get my tasks done or have to learn a new way to get from point A to point B. And I do that just because I love the iPad and I do think the iPad is a future of mobile computing, but it's just a matter of when it's gonna get there and I'm hoping WWDC is that when. Because right now, in a vacuum, today, that iPad Pro is not really worth it to me, especially if you have a 2018 or higher iPad Pro. But that's my two cents. Again, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Leave some comments down below. I'll be answering some of those, but until next time, peace.